Katie Souza wanted the good life. I had all these different preconceived ideas about what the good life was. I thought if I'm working in, in the entertainment industry, then that's the good life. You know, if I've got money, that's the good life. If I'm uh, famous, that's the good life. Katie pursued her dreams. I really loved radio because I loved music so much. And I thought, well, radio would be really fun. So I got into radio when I was really young, like 17 years old, I was on the air. I moved from Hawaii to the mainland and I got a job working at CBS television. Started doing camera work there, running audio and I was having a lot of fun. Acting and modeling opportunities followed. But drug use that began in her teens became a full-fledged addiction that threatened everything. I was doing all these great things on one hand. I, I, it was still empty, though, and horrible. Even though I had this great thing happening to me, it was like I was so miserable and empty, and I didn't even know why, that I was filling myself up with drugs and, and doing all these different things to try to make myself feel satisfied. Katie was chosen for a role with Universal Studios, but just before her callback, she went on a drug binge. And I go into this meeting wasted, and the high guy at Universal looks at me and says, you look like a heroin addict, get out of my office right now. And that was like my last blow. I had gone through all these different opportunities, and I'd blown them all, blown them all. And so I fell face first into crime, and the, and I became a full-time seller because I was already selling drugs to everybody. And then I started cooking meth. She was arrested 12 times in one year for multiple felonies. Finally, she was arrested on federal charges for conspiracy, manufacturing narcotics, and weapons violations. She was sentenced to 13 years in prison. I'm fighting with the cops. I attacked an officer. You know, I'm, I'm getting shook down every day by the, by the COs that are in the facility because I am just like starting up problems every day with all the officers and other inmates there. And I got thrown in the hole over and over and over again while I'm there. Finally, after a year of violent behavior behind bars, Katie reached her breaking point. I had been taken to this lockdown cell that wasn't like a regular lockdown cell. It was booking, so it was, you didn't get a mattress. It's freezing cold. It's covered with urine and vomit and feces. And right then, I just got a revelation. It's like, this is God's way of dealing with you. It took this level of a lockdown cell to get you to break. I'm the only one that can save you out of this. And I just finally had it. I can remember slumping back against that ice cold cement wall and just slumping down and thinking, I can't take this anymore. I mean, I had been fighting everybody out on the streets and now I'm fighting everybody inside. And I didn't even realize that I was fighting God himself. And right then the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to surrender to your captivity because this is my plan and it's perfect. Katie prayed to become a Christian. She read the Bible and shared what she learned with her fellow inmates. The only book in the whole place was the Bible. And I remember picking it up and reading through it. And I just thought, this is the coolest thing I've ever <laughs> read in my life. This is so amazing. And I would go from the front to the back, to the front to the back, over and over again. And as I did that, the Holy Spirit began to point out these scriptures about these people called the ancient Israelites who went to prison. And I was going, Wow, as I read their story, I was like, man, their story is my story. It's a story of every con that I'd ever known. And I started getting excited about it. And I started teaching it to everyone that I could teach it to. Her tough girl attitude and reputation began to change. The cops are calling our unit the God Pod because everybody's worshiping God. We're baptizing people in the shower. We're praying. There's this fellowship going on and this amazing breakout of the presence of God is happening right in the middle of this captivity. After serving five years of her 13-year sentence, Katie won her appeal and was released early. She's free now, and her view of the good life has changed dramatically. The good life is having your purpose and having a relationship with God. There's been so many amazing things that have happened to me because I've had my purpose. For one, when I got out of prison, I really quickly discovered that I didn't want to do drugs anymore. 
You know, I'm so filled up with this relationship with God, so excited about this special thing that God's given me to do, this mission, the book, the ministry, that I had no desire to do drugs. Katie wrote a book about the lessons she learned from the Israelites' time in captivity and how God can use prison time to prepare people for their purpose. He has a bigger, better plan, an amazing plan, where he wants to use captivity to totally give us our dreams, to give us our future. He loves us so much that he's got a plan for it, and it's way bigger than what we thought it was going to be. It's awesome.